Welcome. I'm Michael Levitt. Drew, you're going to talk with me. You're not just yeah, going to Yeah, I'm going to talk. All right. We're here at the front porch. A couple things about the front porch as you look at the place. Look at all the water in your pots. Look at the way everything comes down. This is from sprinkler water spraying up. The sprinklers, boy, when they come on here, they, they're on for, I mean, they were on for three hours, you know, to get around the entire yard. Look at the way everything is terraced, green, nice. I don't check sprinklers, but you know these are working. And I had to run through them, and so did the deer. I saw four deer today, two big ones and two little ones. And come on over here. We want to talk about water entry first off. This would be at the northwest corner of the home in that basement bedroom. And as you look here, you'll see everything sloping towards here. Now, this is a sprinkler box, a timer box. It may have been that this leaked badly at one time. This is near where the water main comes in the home, which is right over into, into this bedroom, into this wall. But as you look at this corner, I'll show you the carpet tag strip that shows me the water entry has come into this corner of the home. Looking back in here, you'll see the earth dives down to this foundation and this, this expensive curbing they put on here to make this planter. So any water that hits here dies here. Look up here at the gutter. There is no downspout, it just ends. So if you see right at the very end, uh, and uh, this whole roof water, there is no gutter on this end roof. So any water that comes down this minor roof line, just cascades <coughs> right here, hits, splashes, and somehow soaks in and comes in this corner of the home. I would start up at the roof, get a, get a full corner gutter, put a downspout, put a discharge that goes off down here to the wonderful trees and foliage down through here. Okay. But take care of roof water first. Get sprinkler water away from here and correct the grading in here. However you're gonna do it so that water will flow away from this corner and not be trapped down in. That would be the logical approach. Okay. As you look down here, I don't know exactly where your foundation terminates and where other framing starts. Is this foundation all the way up to this point? So you take a look, they've, they put a lick and stick type of a stone over the top but as you follow this, this stone line all the way down, notice when you get to the corner, it all of a sudden stops, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about six inches above grade and then comes in and dives and disappears. Is the foundation lower than what we're seeing here? I, I'm not sure what is behind this stonework right in here. Uh, you'd think that, that that's concrete, but it may be wood framing at that point, which, which I assume it probably is and we probably concealed our foundation transition line, which you'd logic would tell you is following that line all the way across mm -hmm. to here. But the, the stonework that's applied over the top, it conceals all of that. So as you look at that stonework, we need a mason for chimney work up on top. There's some fallen stones, but you'll see gaps like where my fingers are through here. And all of this needs to be, see these, this loose stonework. What happens is moisture gets in behind and it literally freezes and pops the stones off. So you end up having to, to reinstall okay. them. And as you look here, other ones, there's, there's signs of pat prior patching, prior repositioning. And that's just the nature of this type of stonework. Coming across here, I need to look out at the street and find out where the meter actually is. I believe it's down in the little housing down right up the sidewalk because the power comes in underground and then comes into the panel and then feeds the rest of the house. There's some breakers in here. This cover panel here that is out of position, that's high power right in there. If you stick your fingers in there, you're gonna go get fried. So if you have curious kids, well, obviously get this cover working just right. There's a couple other uh, rather minor electrical repairs that I've detailed inside the sub, sub panels. Okay. E easily correctable though, okay. easily correctable. Coming along here, you <clears throat> see all the white uh, staining from sprinklers splashing, if you see all of that excessive water hitting that area. You'll see other stonework here, missing stones. Here's a pop stone right there. That's one that came off. Uh, the uh, siding on the home is all a wood siding, which means that it's an ongoing maintenance project. Now, cedar, what, right? Uh, pardon me? Is it cedar? It looks like cedar, but... Yeah, that's what it looks like, yeah. But, and there have been times here on this uh, west side that, that uh, you can see where it's where it's uh, been deferred maintenance and and drier finish, you know. Whereas on the north or the east side and the north it's side, really everything's good. much more pristine. Yeah. But uh, overall, it's in good shape, except for in the non-convenient areas of the home. I think if you stand back over here, Drew, 
and you shine. Oh, we can't see it yet. Let's come around this big tree. Up above the deck on that second level. Yeah, that second level. And especially where that second level uh, wraps around the corner and up the side. I, I don't think that, that the uh, latest guy who did a good job on the lower can be there. He's never even touched any of that up there. Okay. And uh, so maintenance issues. Come take a look here, show this chimney. Mm -hmm. And if you look on the left side of the chimney on the roofing material, you'll see all kinds of... Uh, of uh, uh, Cement or something. Yeah, the mortar and, and some of the stone work. Up high on this side as well, there's, there are several stones that have come off of this chimney up there and uh, it's in uh, poorer condition than the other one but it's time for a for a stone mason to come in and touch up and just dress up all this stone work and uh, but as far as major issues with it no that's all repairable and it's been neglected for probably oh five to ten years probably uh, since they last had somebody out to yeah, deal with it yeah, okay yeah this deck here you'll notice this deck nice big deck it has been overlaid now. They've upgraded with uh, a new uh, synthetic press tech material decking. And uh, underneath, they've had to sister a few areas of support. You'll see here, this is treated lumber added to try and it, look from the side, Drew. Uh -huh. back, let me get a good picture of that. See the way they, they did the two by and then yeah. the spacer in between, see that kind of rot. They, they sistered on some treated lumber here. If you look underneath, hopefully you can get a good visual of all this. You'll see this is upgraded all through here. Older comes across and they, they found another weak section. So they sistered in a couple of legs right through here. Uh -huh. Notice this is treated lumber. They upgraded or added this entire, this entire center beam along through here. So as you look up in, it's a uh, mixture of very, very old and uh, very, very, and much newer. You may want to find out who did this repair work. They know the deck. They've done a pretty good job, you know, as far as retrofitting all, so all of it. it. Might as well keep the same guy involved in it. You know, they came through, and you'll see where they have retrofitted up here is the lag bolts. Take a look up here. See the uh, ledger board is secured yeah. with lag bolts and... and uh, all that in good shape. You notice all the extra cistering over here on the synthetic boards. Uh -huh. So, been a lot of work there. The, uh, do you need to get that in that phone? Yeah, there's no way. All right, this uh, whole grading area back here. So you take a look at, at all the drip lines in this dirt, but notice everything from uh, the edge of the deck to here. It's mm -hmm. all downhill to this point. Where does all this water go? Well, we know where it goes. It collects, it ponds right here. Uh, this classic rot of, uh, of stairs, and yet these were treated railroad ties. You see uh, all in under here. It has a shell of a shape, but it's all deteriorated from the underside. Yeah. That's the way the railroad ties deteriorate. When I looked at this, I said that what they should do is, you know, that you can get those, uh, the, the vinyl pieces that hang down underneath uh -huh. that you Put on each of the joists and it carries the water away to a gutter oh, or whatever. Oh, I see. Yeah, and just carry it off to a gutter and get it out of here. Yeah. Somehow, you're going to have to get in here or over in this corner. This is where all the staining is. If a hole was cut and an underground pipe was off down, down to the lower daylight down there. Sump it out or that way too. You know, just, just let it flow out. I mean, I mean in reality... Uh, I mean, they've got, they've got even sprinkler heads right there. You right. Know? Right. <laughs> so. right. You see, it's all wet. It's all wet now, and that's that's from the latest sprinkler cycle. But as you look inside this door, you take a look down here. When I pull the carpet tack strip up, you know, this door, it, uh, water, that's all water yeah. all the way along this door. Why? Because it all ponds. It all <laughs> collects to right to this point. We were just uh, worried about that, like, where this door won't open any further than that, you know? Well, I, I, I understand uh, that. Luckily, it is all concrete in here. As far as the door opening at all, you've got uh, some cracking and a little bit of movement in your flooring. But this is what, a 1980, yeah. what are we, 1987, 1983? No, I think it's more than that. I think it's a 1979. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, the movement that you've had in the home, 
that happened a long time ago. You, yeah. Now, if you want that door to work better and you want somebody to come in and shave, grind off the yeah, concrete, grind it down to, to restore it, or you want to upgrade the door and instead of putting it at that slab height, to actually space it up another inch or two. Yeah. You know, so that, that you have three swing swinging. over the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, which, which looking at this door and going, oh, as part of our bigger water collection issue, maybe we ought to remove that, raise it up an inch. You know, put along a seal uh, a threshold almost, down there, yeah. a curb that would prevent any water, even if there was ponding, you know, from, from coming in, you know, and, and even if you use the same door back in its place. Well, that, that would be pretty straightforward with the wood, yeah. with the wood siding. It would be straightforward to do that. Okay. Okay. Notice that you have a downspout. Yeah. Da downspout yeah. right to here. Right to here, which is the lowest spot that all the water is going to collect. <laughs> no, I know what it is. It's an ice skating rink in the wintertime. All, yeah. the, wall, all the water. Yeah, there's, a, there. there's several different ways that we could get water yeah. out of here, but it needs to probably needs to be addressed. Now, because of this and because of a couple of things I'll show you on the other side, if, if you're questioning how to take care of this, Blair Scoresby, which you, I've referred to you before, and there are other professionals as well, but, but they deal with this stuff, and it's straightforward getting surface water away. It's different when it's underground spring activity, you know, and you're just thinking, uh oh, how are we gonna control these measures? This is all surface water, we can see. Yeah. We see all the contributing yeah. factors right here, another sprinkler head right there, whoo! We wanna make sure all these little weeds are, you know, are covered. <laughs> see, take a look here along the window. So this is what your sprinklers are doing. If you come along this trim line, see all the peeling, flaking paint, the hard water etching. Yeah. all through here. That's all from just sprinklers. The, the siding that all of a sudden comes down and, and, and is loose and warped, you know, uh -huh. that's sprinklers and you okay. can control that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get the sprinkler guy out here and get him to adjust those things. Yeah. And this is all, this is all sun. Yeah. The, the, the finish on this, that's kind of rough is all sun. Now taking a look, stay right where you're at. Notice once again, the, uh, this is treated lumber and this is non-treated That's the lumber. old one. Yeah. This one, I uh, noticed it's sistered with treated. So, I mean, they came through, they spent a lot of money. There's still some old old decking on there. Uh -huh. The spacing is four inches, which is the way it's supposed That's to be. That's the, the code, yeah. in good shape, you know? Now, all these railroad tie ones, these are rotting out from behind. Now, when I was out here, this is the main super highway for the two mamas and the two little babies, uh, the deer that went on up through somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I was interrupting their normal daily, you know, walk through the neighborhood. This deck here, stay right where you're at. I want you to look. Notice this. Notice how tall this is. This uh -huh. with just a bracket right there. And then when you come around, this home is nestled into the trees. They're trying everything they can to preserve the trees. And as a result, I'll show you on the other side of the deck. Where pushing the on it. Yeah. It's pushed, yeah. Take a look at the way trees scrape up there. Notice no downspout on this end of that. Notice oh, that. that's interesting too. Yeah. I wonder why that's that way. Well, the water just comes down. Where does it come? It cascades here. And then... That's probably good if it lands in this. If it lands in this bed, then you're probably... <laughs> but why, why not? Go ahead and put it down. Yeah, downspouts down, down to an underground... Uh, As you take a look here, notice spacing, notice railings. These were all upgraded. Deck boards. The synthetic track type deck boards. You come around this tree, take a look at this support, mm -hmm. and look at that angle. That's from the tree. Yeah. You know, what do you want to do? Yeah, you want to keep an eye on that, obviously, but. Take a sawzall and cut the corner of that deck out. That's what you do. Yeah, you alter the deck to yeah. keep the tree. Any other place in Utah, I'm telling you, you got to take these trees out. But no, that's the beauty of this yeah. whole. Yeah, the I setting. Hot. Yeah, you <laughs> cut, cut cut around the edge of that deck with the sawzall. <coughs> so as you look here, yes, the deck does lean downward. And why does it? It's because of the trees and trying to preserve all of that. Okay. But notice the stairs, all of this. You'll see if you look closely. You'll see the splitting on the stringers. See all that. Uh -huh. And yeah, I mean, is it new? No, old and. And, uh, but the preserving the uh, trees, that was the highest priority, obviously, as you look all the way up around here. You've seen here, 
Notice yeah. no gutters. See how there's no gutters? Yeah, there's this just a... here, I don't know if it shows up well enough, but... Yeah, I can totally see there it. There you go. You yeah. see that right through there. And this is an area that you go, wait a minute. They paid somebody to take care of all the painting and the trim. Why didn't they do that back here? I don't even think they touched that area. But this is where we start to get into uh, snow, icicles, all of that. And so because it's wood trims versus uh, aluminum or vinyl capping, you know, I'd recommend aluminum on on, uh, on all that soffit work. Yeah. You know, and turn it into a maintenance free. Now, as we look at this window well, I'm looking again because we've had a water entry through that window well. Okay. But these weren't the original window wells. This wasn't the shape. This wasn't the style. No, and that's as we come and look recent. closer, notice the parge coat is all consistent along this one. But then when we get to this one, notice once again it's like that front porch window well. See the yeah, difference so in the parge coat? That they did that and it's because they had two window wells before. Now, I'm going to show you when we get in that room down there long-term water entry here okay but i don't know what they've disclosed uh i think they've taken corrective measures and it may be a non-issue and they've just never upgraded the carpet and the, and the tax strip but i would be yeah maybe fool. these maybe these uh my thinking is these window wells are the upgrade i mean if you well, look, let me show you let's look, look at this gutter and this down look at the size of this gutter yeah. oversized look at the size of this along here this is all oversized this is yeah. double size to yeah. catch all that, it goes underground to somewhere. I don't know where they've routed it to daylight, somewhere in the lower yard. But then you take a look, you look at the berm, the retaining wall, the setup, you don't see ponding water signs or anything down in here now. And uh, this may have been the corrective action, but surely on the dis disclosure documents, they would have yeah. put that, unless it happened 20 years ago. And, and they feel it's all taken care of. And when we re-question them, they'll go, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, that's why we did all this, you know? Right, right. And, and that's completely plausible. But the money put in here, this was not Harvey Homeowner going down to the home center trying to do it himself. Yeah. You can't buy this kind of gutter no. at the home center. It's all, it's all oversized. And so... so they did put a lot of money into corrective action. And interesting that major water entry along this side yet this window well that back here nothing i found nothing it has a desk along there and, and mm -hmm. carpet tax strips i've got nothing in, in those rooms okay there. okay the uh acs these are 2001s 2000 2001 yet our three units inside because two of the units have ac one doesn't the basement one does not have ac but uh uh they were 2010s. I've got it all in the report, but okay. but they they weren't a match set. It wasn't a. You know, they probably up. replaced these first, yes, and then went in and replaced the furnace after the fact. But but all all, all high end equipment. Very when top they put of the it line, in, yeah. Yet when you when you think about it, it's going to be. Uh, I mean, either a home warranty would be a great, you know, a great investment yeah. due to the just yeah. the age. Yeah. I want you to look at retaining wall. Let's switch modes for a moment. And as we look at this huge boulder retaining wall, and down in this area we've got railroad tie. Let's look closer, because I believe these are for the benefit of the newer house up there, and it's probably their retaining wall, but I want to show you the, the weak areas that I see. Bedroom yeah. rear entry. And uh, I want you to look at the boulders here and look at the dirt. See all the mud? Uh huh. See this is all muddy and all muddy. There's an erosion track right off of this corner that comes down through here. Uh, it isn't the same way over there. It isn't the same way in here. Notice this is all, see how this is all dry all through there. But we have a, an area. Water that's here. coming through here. Yeah. And so water control measures, but like I said, I don't know whose this is. If it does fail, it's going to come down through the trees, not the house. Okay. Okay, you can follow me up further, Drew. You see, they've got good foliage that holds all the dirt in place. All of this dry right now. Might make sense to talk to the neighbor about... 
changing that up a little bit. Oh, I see. one it's interesting because you go this huge expensive boulder thing wall and then you got this old wood railroad tie not treated lumber but if you look at it from this angle a little closer over you can see the bow yeah it's yeah. moving that boulder's pushing on it even when, when it fails it will affect their, their entry driveway and like i said i don't know if your property line is here i don't know if your property line is here i don't know if they own that complete thing. I don't know if it was a shared investment. I don't know if there's any agreements. But this retaining wall just age. You know, the dead men in here, you see the way mm -hmm. see the, they're the locked back in. Yeah. Everything is bowed outward. Now, this is a fun one. This is fun along here. Take a look at this gutter that was added. Huge. See? It's the huge one that's part of that other huge one. Uh -huh. It's part of the electric heat strip tape and icicles and all that. But notice the discharge. Where'd they bring it? You see where they brought it? About <laughs> halfway down the garage, right? Where does it go from there? Just down into the garage wall? Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> or it puddles enough, it won't go off that way. It's going to come back right back around here and then go to where they didn't want it in the first place. Obviously. Right underground, right along, dig a trench, and right to daylight on the lower property. You know, do something to control it. Now, the tree, if you get all the way down here, notice <laughs> this is what I meant. It's really cool that, uh, that they, uh, the tree, oh, trees they are go. more important. See, the trees are way more important yeah. than, than this. Uh, that's what they needed to do with the deck. See? Right, right, right. And see, but now even look, look at the roof. Yeah, it's, it's grown still, some more. <laughs> it's grown more and it's leaning more. And, uh, you know, should you trim a couple more branches? Well, tree maintenance is something you want to, uh, want to take care of. But the trees on this lot in this area are more precious than any, any garage. Right, right. And, uh, and yet, I never get to say that. The tree is always the first thing to go on any other house in any other neighborhood. But this, this neighborhood is very, very unique. Take a look here. See the way the tree roots uh, are, are decomposed. That's what the subterranean termites that we have here in Utah, that's what they do. They decompose tree roots and turn it back into mulch. Notice we go back into uh, boulder retaining wall, mm -hmm. the expensive boulder retaining wall that now comes into your parking area. That's why as I'm comparing boulder walls and then I see this and I go, well, wait a minute, mm -hmm. you know? It's kind of strange that they have that that piece right there. Yeah, yeah. And 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 what was here before? Just that house up there. This house wasn't there. This right, house right. Is much, much newer. So it, it it's kind of interesting the way it's it's put together. And these railroad ties that you see here, like I said, they decompose from the back side. And eventually, they're just a shell, and they still look like there's something ties, there. But they're big now. And it's interesting. You see that concrete down on the bottom? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So they got a concrete oh, foundation underneath it, or slab, or maybe it's the old driveway for whatever used to be there, or something. Or was this the level of, of some parking area out here, or some tennis court, or something? Uh -huh. That then, when this lot got sold off, they had to change the elevation height of the driveway. You know. Yeah. But that, that's just us guessing, just us guessing. Take a look at the roof. The roof is in uh, good overall shape. Ask him about the date. Probably okay. Probably 10 to 13 years. That's old. what I figured. And, and it'll go about 25 to 30. If you look at it closely, you gotta be careful when you come down. I'll use the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Over in here, if you stand right about here and look up on the roof, you'll see high spots and low spots, it's because it, yeah. it, it, it changes the framing up there. You have some vaulted areas, you have some, but I've been in the attic there. I've been in the attic over in here. I've got pictures of all of that. Interesting, if you look at your tall black pipe, see the two tall black yep. pipes? Scan over to your right and look at the short black pipe. That's interesting. It sagged down into the attic is what it is. Uh -huh. uh, but 
the electric heat strip tape that's been added, you have one here, you have one on the front as well. Yeah, it's just vent pipe, but it's probably, considering the amount of snow we get, that probably would be a good idea. Although, who cares if you get water in it anyhow? But, well, and if snow gets up, I mean, in theory, they come up 12 inches. Is it, is it anything that is making any difference? Yeah. Probably not, probably not. And from the attic, I could see where it was originally high. And, and it, it slipped. Down in, it pushed down in. Yeah, I mean, you could you could extend yeah. that really easy with a piece of PVC, but even if you get water in it, who cares? Yeah. It just goes in the sewer. <laughs> right. So This uh, door here, this would have been the original front garage door style as well. I did not open this one. It's manually opened. It's currently locked and blocked with some stuff. Uh, it's an old wood sectional uh, opening door. Notice everything same, same windows, same siding. So to me, it was all built at the same yeah, time, yeah. which is interesting. They dumped a whole bunch of money in this place, yet you had to go outdoors to get in the garage, yet it's got a I think that was a style. I think that's what they wanted. Right. Well, they did everything as they wanted it. Uh -huh. Here, take a look at the settlement here. Notice the cracking by your feet. Notice the uh, height differential to this slab that comes through here. Yeah, I bet they had a big water issue back here, and these gutters took care of it. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, come on through. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop us right here, and I'm going to restart.